Hello everyone, my name is Jules and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. In the last episode, we went through the Boblin Archer Camp. Wait, Archer Camp? I guess that there were archers, but it was a camp and not an archer camp. I don't know why I said that. And in this episode, we are going to be going through the first half of... Well, not half, but the first bit of... Wait for it. I'll get to the name. It's the Arbiter's Grounds, and I said that at the end of the last episode. Oh yeah, and there are these moving things in the sand, and yeah, they're they're. Oh, we saw these in the desert, and they only took one hit to kill it. I don't think I actually killed anything, and. Yeah, here they are bigger and they take two. Oh, don't. Okay, good. You just barely missed me. And... Here we have a certain enemy that is found all over this dungeon. And I believe it's unique to this dungeon. It might be found... One, it's found actually one other place. But we won't be getting into that until the very end of the game. Those are, well, I don't actually know their exact name, but they're something like mini Stealthos or something. Stealthos are like the skeletons of the Zelda universe. Okay, now we've opened this door. And, oh yes, over here we can fill, we can refill our lantern, although I think it's already full. Um, where is our lantern? Oh, we have it equipped. Um, so. Okay, I don't think it is. Well, anyway, I'm just going to fill it up. Uh, we're going to be needing the lantern a lot this dungeon. Okay, and I believe that here there is something we need. I think it's a key? Although there's a locked door, so yeah, it, it is a key. Oh, yeah. We have to deal with these things, this dungeon. Um, I don't know their name. Their name is up on screen now. I didn't actually know that you could do this, but apparently you can just use the lantern and it'll make all of them just go around you and then basically you just spin attack and they all die. I didn't know that until like, I don't know, maybe a year ago. <laughs> And they were pretty annoying up until then. So basically that's how you get rid of them. I did not know that there was a way until recently. Oh yeah, and here uh, we'll be needing a lantern just like we will for many things. Oh, and this is where the mini stallings just swarm you. Yeah. Okay. There. There are more of them. It might be beneficial to use... Me. Although I guess... Although thinking about it, we can probably just use our senses to see. Yeah, we can just use the dark energy and then we can see with our senses. And then we also don't use lantern oil. That's a good idea. Um, okay, there are only two more. <laughs> For a moment I thought there was another enemy in this dungeon that we'll see you later. And it's one that I'm not looking forward to. I believe that we will see one this episode, and let's just say that the counterpart in another game gave me nightmares as a child, like it did many people. Although, something that I want to say, and we'll get to this now. Twilight Princess borrows a lot from Ocarina of Time. However, there is one thing that they borrow a lot from, and that is that both of the game's fourth dungeons are very similar. Even though they have different themes, like the Forest Temple and the Arbiter's Grounds, like they're both very eerie, they're both pretty creepy. And in the first half, you have to rescue, not rescue, you have to defeat Pose. 
And also, um, we have 20 pounds now, but a few episodes ago I said that we really wanted to get 16. Part of that is because we need 20 to get something, the thing that we need from Giovanni. And we were going to get four here, probably because these pose will give you pose souls. And they are part of the 60 that you need to complete the game. Which I do intend on doing, so... Yes, we have a pose soul. And after this flame goes on to the candle torch thing. That took a sweet time getting there. Now, time for us to forget a scent that is honestly really creepy if you think about it too hard um, to the Poe scent, which is a lot less creepy to have. Um, I don't really need to explain why having the scent of your girlfriend is super creepy, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so here um, there is a piece of part. I believe that the. Oh, okay. From when I saw those statues and it got really creeped out, that's probably gonna happen this episode. And for the next two episodes, this dungeon is so creepy. Now, this dungeon didn't tear me as a child because I mean, child me was 11 by the time I played this game. Unlike, like, Ocarina of Time, where I was 6, and that game's version of this dungeon was honestly horrifying. Um, if I ever play Ocarina of Time, you're going to find out all of the things in that game that creeped me out as a kid, just like you did with Donkey Kong last Let's Play. Okay, yes, and we have the dungeon map, so I believe that this dungeon is actually pretty big. It is, it's I'm not sure if I want to say that it's larger than the Water Temple was, but it's still really big. I think it is slightly larger, and if you don't know what you're doing for either dungeons, I think that the Water Temple will take you a longer amount of time. But if you know, like, every route to take, then this dungeon is probably going to take you longer. So... Okay, I believe that we need to go in here, although one thing that you need to remember, using turning into a wolf and using the post scent is going to help you a lot, so do that. Okay, yes, and there's a thing that we can pull. And now a staircase appears. Okay, and I think that we actually need to go through here first. Okay, there are, there are a lot of rats. Okay, yeah, but I think we actually did need to go down first. Okay, so let's go back and do that. Okay, and I think that this room has, well, one, it has the stealth of skulls. Well, I'm gonna have to show so many enemy names on screen. I think it's the third one now, that I don't know the name of. Okay, and the enemy music is still playing because we have yet to find something, and we have a re-dead. Oh, I am not looking forward to this. However, there is there are two really easy ways to fight them. In fact, I should... Oh, but yeah, I do know why I turned into a wolf. The second really easy way, you need an item that we don't have yet. I won't be getting any time soon. Uh, one of the ways is to turn into a wolf and latch onto their neck and basically kill them that way 
Oh yeah, I'm also selling that is kind of nice. They will always drop red rupees, and I like red rupees. Um, there is one more thing in the game that we will need a lot of money for. Um, I just decided not to get it because we need to do like the whole magic armor side quest thing. Um, okay, I think we can go straight up. I think we can hookshot up there. Yeah, because, um, okay, I almost rolled off. Oh, those rats are back. Um. Are we supposed to go through here? I mean, like, I got a key, but... Okay, we are supposed to go here. The key is for slightly later. Because look at all of these lanterns! Isn't everything completely normal about all of them? Um, ignore the whole, like, jingling noise. And about these lanterns, there especially isn't anything weird about this one, is there? Hmm. Well, I mean, like, I'm just going to turn on my senses and we definitely are going to get attacked by a Poe. Oh, wait, there is a Poe. Okay, it took us L targeting that to get its attention. And die! Um, Poe? Yeah, something that I need to mention is that they do need to change color. And that Poe just got pwned. I know I'm funny. I'm really not, but... Okay, we now have our second Poe's soul. And I believe that we need to go back down. Oh god, I hope that the redead isn't back. Um, don't jump. Okay, is the redead back? No. Okay, I'm very happy about that. I do not like redeads in any Zelda game. I'm trying to remember if redeads were in Breath of the Wild. I don't actually remember if they were. I mean, like, I might have run, I might have ran into them when I played through that game, and they might have been like so different that I didn't recognize them as redeads, or I just completely forgot about them. But uh, someone tell me in the comments were redeads in Breath of the Wild? I forget. <laughs> okay, I think we need to go out through here. And we should be able to get to that locked door. Yes, we can. I'm just going to run by those rats. And we are now in a room with a lot of quicksand. Okay, there are one of those things. And... Yes. Okay. Got those out of the way. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, something that I just remembered. Um, if you see spikes, uh, never mind. Okay, thought I thought that I, I remembered um something wrong. Like I thought that if you like, saw spikes move, you could see where they were by sensing them, but I guess I was wrong about that. Maybe I was just always seeing the spikes before they came down, so I just never noticed. But anyway, I thought you could do that. You can't. Um, game? Okay, good. There, we're on the same page. We will push this block. Um, yeah, something about games. Um... Like, this wasn't really much of a slidey block, a slidey block puzzle. I was pronouncing that right. Um, however, something that a lot of gamers really hate is slidey block puzzles. 
I actually love slidey block puzzles, and the next dungeon is going to have so many of them, and oh, I love them so much. Okay, I can't wait until the next dungeon. Like, this dungeon... This dungeon, like, I, I, I like it. It's not one of my favorites. It's not one of my least favorites. I just regular... I just have, like, a regular amount of likingness for this dungeon. The next dungeon, though, I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> okay, and... There. That is done. Um, okay, there is a thing. I believe that this is the compass? Uh, I think... Okay, yeah, that, that is the compass. And now we need to push this this way. Or pull it, I guess. Um, okay, there is a... Thing. Oh, um... Oh, it's so re-dead. Um, actually, I just remembered another really good way to get rid of re-deads. Okay, good. It's not marching towards me. I probably want to... Move that combo off. And if you equip your bomb arrows... You can hit the re-deads from really far away. I missed there. Um, and they die to two bomb arrows. So that is another very good way to get them out if you need to get them out from a distance. Otherwise, I just recommend doing it as a wolf. It's a lot more resourceful. Okay, we have a key. We can go through this door. And I believe the next room has even more re-deads. Okay, I guess that is one complaint that I have. Oh, and yeah, there is another Poe in here. And yes, um, I think that's a spin attack. I, I, I like spin attacking. Oh, we're out of dead And even more. You know, I should probably at least show off, like, the thing that's special about re-deads. This is the thing that is special about re-deads. We're on hero mode. Oh god, no, no, don't, don't, don't kill me. Um, I, I'm, oh no, oh no, um, okay, good. They, they should be almost dead. I'm mashing B, I'm mashing B, why did I do this? Uh, okay, good, we killed, we killed one of them. I'm just gonna bomb arrow this. Die. Oh. I did not need that. I guess that's what I get for showing off why I don't like re-deads. Because that happens. We lost half our health and it's going to be really hard to get it back. And now we have to fight a Poe. Although I personally do find these Poes easier than the ones outside. Even though they take two, well, I guess the other ones take two hits to kill, so I guess I can just say find this one easier. Anyway, we have pwned our third Poe. And that is the second time that I overused that pun. Well, I, I really like puns. Um, You might be able to tell now that I'm actually incorporating them into my Let's Plays and not just Twitter. But yeah. Get used to hearing them from me. Oh yeah, we have our third Poe. And I believe that we can actually get to the fourth in this episode, because we are not too far away. Um... Oh, it's this room! Um... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go until we get to the fourth Poe. And just ignore the 25 minute mark. Yeah, this is another enemy that, like, really creeps people out, and I found really annoying at first. So, the first time that I ever saw these enemies was when I was seeing my brother play through this, and when he got to this room, he just could not figure out how to get rid of ghoul rats. So, once he got the key, he just kept on exiting and re-entering. That way he'd make this jump. That way... He did not have to kill the ghoul rats because he couldn't figure out how. 
Um, you're just supposed to spin attack as the wolf. And it's best if you do the uh, rotating the stick once and pressing B, partly because um, if you use the dark energy attack, you like target all of the wolves and stuff and you really don't want to do that. Um, it'll just make everything get super annoying. Okay, yeah, so we are almost to the final Poe. I believe we just have to go through this room? Yeah, I'm looking at the map, and that's all that we have to do. I know where the fourth Poe is. Yes, let's just push this all the way to the end. There, okay. Um, I believe that there's just a red rupee, but we are a little bit short on time, and I do want to get the fourth Poe before the end of the episode. So I'm just going to ignore that. That is a red rupee if you want to get it, or, you're want, or you want to know what it is. Oh no. Oh my god. We are going to have to do this again. Oh yeah, and there is a chest here. Um, if you want to know what it... Again? Oh no. Don't, don't fall. Don't fall. Okay. Third time's the charm, hopefully? Maybe I won't get annoyed by one of those other things. Oh. Okay, yeah, that, that's a Meaver stamp, so I'm not really gonna get that. Um, I believe in the original, it's like 10 or 20 rupees, and it's really not worth it. Oh, I didn't realize what room this was. Okay, this is not the room that I thought it was. So a few episodes ago, we got bomb lanes and I said that they had a really great utility use or combat use to take out one particular enemy in this dungeon. So what you do is you take a Stalthos, you get it near a wall and you drop a bomb lane and they just instantly die. The bombling will hit the wall and yeah. Oh, I love doing that. Okay, this room. Um I used to do this room with trial and error. Basically use the pose scent. We need to get um hang on. We need to light this torch and this torch. If you light you know, the wrong torches, basically the doors close and a bunch of mini stealthos come up. Okay, and is this the room? Yes, this is the room with the final part. Okay, I believe right here. Okay, and you actually had to beat the final Poe this way in Ocarina of Time. So basically, you need to find out who the real Poe is. Um, in this game, it's whichever one turns white. Um, oh, I didn't target the right Poe. Okay, I got it at the last second. Okay, which one of you is the real Poe? I think it's you. It wasn't. Oh no, we can't. Oh, we couldn't attack the Poe too in quicksand. Okay, now? One of you try to attack me, please. Okay. And, yes. Okay, we have all four postals here. And we now have 24 in all, so we are moving along. And I guess that now that we have all of the postals, then I'm just going, actually no, 
wait. I think that the next room is near here. I don't think I have to end the episode off here. Okay, we are slightly over time, but that won't matter. Um, okay, so we need to go right here. Oh, no! No! I went right into the quicksand. And I just remembered that there was a hookshot target. Okay, we aren't like in the beep beam. Oh my god. We're, we're, we're beep beam. I should have used fairy right now. I, I don't want to deal with this. Okay, and we now have a fair amount of hearts. And I believe this is... Yes, this is the opening room. So now that we have all four Poe's... Now all of the lanterns... Torch thingies are lit. And... This has been True the Outrageous Jewels and Let's Play Twilight Princess HD. Next episode, I probably still won't have a consistent outro, and I will see you all then. Goodbye. Oh yeah, and we're also going to fix, well, go into that gate thing. Well, goodbye, as I said.